the city of Cape Town's anti-land invasion unit has received some criticism over the removal of a naked man from his dwelling yesterday while he was taking a bath. Richard Bossman from the city of Cape Town joins me now. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. Just give our viewers context under what circumstances that man in question was removed naked from his dwelling yesterday. Awesome, thank you. Yes, yesterday on we were, I was provided with a copy of a video that was watched up to me late yesterday afternoon in which it showed that our staff were involved in a scuffle with a gentleman who had not been clothed and who it is alleged they forcibly evicted from a structure. What had happened was then was we examined the video content itself and realized that obviously the contact of the staff member was not, was not acceptable, was definitely not acceptable to the city. As a result of that, we've done two things. The members were suspended from duty late last night, and we've also initiated an investigation into the situation in order to ascertain what actually took place there. But I want to stress that from the city side, the conduct of the person was unacceptable. Mm -hmm. So talk to us yeah. about under what law uh, were those officers operating? Okay. All right. Um, the area in question is part of Kali Church in Empowini. And part of, the, part of the role on duties of the staff members concerned is they part of the city's anti-land invasion unit. And their role and responsibility is to, on a daily basis to patrol city land to prevent land from being, from being invaded, especially where land has been earmarked for housing developments and it's already been allocated to beneficiaries. So this happened during the course of the normal day-to-day -day duties yesterday. However, in the situation, and as is clear from the video, the staff exceeded the boundaries of what they were allowed to do as a result of which they've been suspended. Where you have staff structures like that that are occupied by people. We have a route to follow, which is to go to court for an eviction order. And even more so during the lockdown regulations, we are not evicting people, um, especially in occupied structures as we have to, be, have to approach the court in order to get an eviction notice. So in this situation, this was not an unoccupied structure. This was not an empty structure as was seen from the video. And the action that took should not have been taken. So, so I'm a bit confused. So that you're saying that action shouldn't have been taken and those law enforcement officials shouldn't have been there, I'm assuming because of the Prevention of Illegal no. Evictions Act. No, 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 no. What we're doing is the city's, city land is still being patrolled in order to, to enable us to prevent people from, from putting in structures. In this situation itself, the structure was already erected and there were people inside the structure. And once that situation arises, you have to approach the court in order to get an interdict mm. for an eviction order. Was that done? Uh, no, no, there was no, there's no eviction order granted for that structure. The conduct of the officers was not acceptable yesterday. And as a result of that, we've issued a, a suspension notice to the members concerned. So then what's the remedy for those people? Because I'm assuming if they were not allowed to be evicted, if they go back today, you cannot actually remove them without that eviction order? Correct. The remedy would be that we would have to approach the court to ask for an eviction order. Obviously, the court would allow the uh, affected person an opportunity to make representations. And even if an eviction order was granted, we, there's no evictions taking place during lockdown. That would have to wait until after lockdown in any case. Mm -hmm. So tell me, in light of that incident and going forward, how do you balance your land rights as the city with Section 153 of the Constitution and the developmental duties in terms of that section to provide communities with their basic needs like housing and the like? I understood, and I think what this is going to do as well as has already provoked a, a, a review of our processes so we can balance out to make sure that we meet the rights. I mean, it is a balancing of rights. The city has the right to protect each land, to make sure that land that's been earmarked for housing development and for projects, and in some cases have even been allocated already, is protected. What we also find is, unfortunately, in the area is that the unscrupulous people who are taking advantage of people who are vulnerable, and they pretend to be owners of the land, and they actually end up selling portions of land they're allocated to people only for the persons later on to discover that all the guys, this land actually belongs to the city of Cape Town. It's not private land. You haven't purchased any land. And that's a very difficult situation to deal with. So what we are going to do is we're going to review our processes to look at how we deal with it to make sure we act within the confines of the law so that we do protect city land, but we do it in a lawful way. So do we know where that order came from and, and how does that work? Okay, what you'd find is that there was a team that was in patrol in that area. They work in the area on almost daily basis. So they would have made the decision based on the facts presented to them on the ground. Um, I'm clearly of the view that the facts presented itself in such a way that the structure should not have been broken down at all. And that is what we will be dealing with throughout the disciplinary process. Yeah, so I'm just trying to understand uh, the kind of law enforcement that was patrolling and made that decision and perhaps who they reported, who they answered to. 
No, no, the law enforcement officers, they are law enforcement officers, they, they work for the city of Catan, so they are accountable to the city, which is the employer. They're in our anti-land invasion unit, and they operate within certain guidelines. Yeah. They are aware that you can prevent people from erecting structures, you can prevent people from taking occupation of, of land. But the moment the structures regarded has been occupied, then we have other legal provisions that kick in, and that should have been applied yesterday. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you, you're also focusing on the legalities and what's allowed and not allowed. So I'd like to ask, as you've been quite quick to take action and you've pointed out repeatedly that you were in the wrong and those law, efficient, uh, law officials were in the wrong when it came to their conduct, what's, is, is it going to end at the suspension and the dealing with them there or is there perhaps a need to look at the culture that takes place with law enforcement in Cape Town particularly with vulnerable people, particularly with people in township areas, and, and the kind of culture that's there, because this is not the first time we've seen incidences of this nature. Yeah, as, I, as I've said to you earlier, I mean, this, if anything, looking at the video, we clearly need to review the way in which we deal with it. Mm -hmm. Our staff need to have a much better understanding of the roles and responsibilities and what they can do and can't do in order to avoid situations like this. I think this is also creating unnecessary tension, so definitely, and also reviewing the way in which we deal with these situations and that staff operate within, within clear guidelines and frameworks. We need to relook look at it. I, I agree and we've accepted that today. Richard Bosman, the Councillor for Safety and Security from the City of Cape Town, thanks so much for your time on SABC News this afternoon.